what does NCRT kept in store for us? Economics which is divided into two halves. Statistics for economics, Indian economic development, the series of development that has happened in India. You will be able to understand economics as a subject, economics as a concept. But this is going to be the beginning if you are just going to apply a little bit of common sense to it. Students, please don't worry about economics. Rather, make it your friend. Hello and good morning to all of you. I'm R. Subramanian, lecturer in economics, Vidyashram PU College. I take the opportunity here to welcome you all, to welcome all the fresh and dynamic minds of economics and commerce to this wonderful session, the introduction to the first PUC economics. Now economics as a subject itself is quite interesting for us. Many of us would have tried to understand what is economics all about, what is economy, how does the country run, so what are the different factors all together. In this session, we are just going to see how economics makes an interesting factor in your life and how interesting it is to study the subject and take it forward as an area of interest, as a matter of concentration altogether. So going forward, we shall try to understand what is economics from the first PUC standpoint and what does NCRT kept in store for us in terms of this interesting subject. So introduction to the first PUC economics starts with what is the parts of the economics. So we are going to talk about the first PUC economics which is divided into two halves. The first one is the statistic factor and the second one is the Indian economic development. So what we need to understand here is that the economics is being made so simplified for you, so attractive and so beneficial for you that you know you can understand the subject step by step and also you can put it into a practical application. So if you look into the first half, that is statistics, it is a very, very simple and basic problems like your average, mean, median, mode, all those simple concepts which you have already studied in your previous years of education. We are going to have a quick look into that in statistics. And then we are going to talk about the Indian economic development, which is a very, very interesting and informative topic. Why? Because the Indian economic development is going to make you understand the series of development that has happened in India, a vast nation with a lot of diversity, a lot of culture around and a lot of economic growth. So the way NCRT has designed the syllabus for the first PUC economics is simply wonderful. It's simply brilliant altogether. I really believe and hope that you will be excited to take up this course and study with me. Now moving forward, let me show you what are the textbooks that are being designed for you for the study of economics. So these are the two textbooks, Statistics for Economics, the part one, and then you have the Indian Economic Development, that is part two. Now these two subjects are very, very interesting. They are really creative enough, as I have told you. They have very simple chapters, so you don't have to get worried at all. All you have to do is pay a little attention, start applying your basic common mathematics, and then you will be able to see a fantastic progress in economics. The Indian economic development is more of theory, so you don't have to worry much. Your English is definitely good. You will be definitely able to frame good sentences. You can combine it with your general knowledge and you will be able to score really good in the Indian economic development part. So both the textbooks have been designed in such a manner that you will be able to understand economics as a subject, economics as a concept, economics as a matter of vital importance altogether. Now moving forward, now we have the syllabus in detail. Let's have a quick look into the syllabus altogether. We start with introduction to statistics. Anything that we do, we need to know the introduction part. So that's where we start. What is statistics all about? We're going to talk about collection and organization of data. Definitely a very, very interesting topic where we are going to learn about how data is collected, what are the methods that are involved in this, the primary method, secondary method. Then we are going 
going to organize the data. So these are all steps which you will see that you are going to do it as a practical work in your class. You are going to learn it with a practical application. You are going to learn it hands down. So this is where the syllabus gets very, very interesting. It is not just mathematics or numbers or just theory. It's a combination of practical as well as theoretical factors put together. So this is going to be really interesting for us. We are going to learn a lot in the coming days. Presentation of data, the way you are going to present. See, these days when you look at the social media, when you go through the videos or when you go through the links in the social media, what makes it very interesting? The way you put the data. So the way you present matter, the way you put the content really makes things more interesting. So presentation of data, we are going to learn it in particular so that tomorrow when you are going to present any kind of information that comes in a very organized manner. We are also going to learn something called measures of central tendency. This is very, very important. Why? Because from an economic standpoint, as well as from a knowledge standpoint, this will make you understand some of the common factors that we use in day, that is like average, mean, median, mode. So all those simple max are the, the factors of the central tendency here. Measures of dispersion, again, a little bit of continuation from here to here. So you will see that you will are able to connect yourself and take it forward correlation this is going to be a new topic but no need to worry this is going to be extremely interesting because you are going to find the relationship between the different variables followed by index number and then we are going to talk about the statistical tools usage altogether now if you look into the syllabus altogether for the first level that is the statistics the entire concepts that have been built by NCRT is developed in such a manner to make you understand and grow with the subject. There is no point in worrying about it or there is no point in getting afraid saying that will this be complicated, will this be difficult for me to understand, absolutely not. Economics is such an interesting subject, once you start involving yourself in the subject, you will be able to understand the day-to-day -day affairs of your country. You will be able to understand how the markets move. You will be able to understand what happens with your own country. So the impact of understanding the day-to-day -day operation, the impact of understanding how a country grows, how a country develops is all stored here. So all you need to do is that get yourself immersed into the world of economics. Just get yourself involved with your mind, heart, body and soul. You are there and you will do a fantastic job in economics. So the syllabus is just designed for you in such a manner that you can do your best and you will be definitely able to score and come out in fantastic manner altogether. The second part of the syllabus. The Indian economic development, one of the most important factor, one of the most interesting thing that you need to see here. If you start with the Indian economic syllabus, you'll see that before independence and then we immediately come to after independence. So, you know, most of the time history might sound boring, might sound a little bit dry, but here we have not made it as history, but we have made it as a chronological event altogether. So, you will try to understand the step-by-step -step sequence what has happened in our economy. Because if you look at the history, the heritage of India, it's a very, very vast situation and a very, very vast story altogether. So in NCRT syllabus for the first PUC economics, they have made it in a very simplified manner so that you can understand step by step how India achieved its independence, the economic independence and how we started making progress. After this chapter, every other chapter that has been decided and designed is just right for you. Why? Because these are the topics that are governing our country altogether. These are the topics that are being the discussion, the most heated discussion in any part of the globe. Now, if you look at liberalization, you look at poverty, human capital, rural development, employment or infrastructure, environment, all these factors are the things that you are going to study 
analyze and be a part of this Indian economy. Not to forget the last chapter where we are going to talk about our neighbors. We are going to talk about China, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, so many countries. These are all very, very interesting to know. Why? Because if you see the entire syllabus, that's going to give you a world of knowledge, a sea of knowledge where you're going to learn about different factors of the economy. Plus, you will also find it very, very interactive where you can question and find out the reasons why the country is moving in a particular way. So this syllabus, I would say that is the most interesting and an informative way of keeping you engaged and also keeping you on a constant learning mode. So economics is really going to be interesting. Economics is going to be informative. Plus, economics is also going to make you not knowledgeable at the end of the day. So all I would like to say is that it is not just a welcome to the world of economics, but this is going to be the beginning of a new era for you, a new lifestyle for you. So please do take economics seriously, do involve yourself in the subject and you will see miracles happening in your life is the syllabus that is the pattern that we are going to see in economics. Now everybody as a student will have this question in the mind. Can I score in the subject? They say economics is very dry, very theoretical in nature. So will I be able to score? The answer is an absolute yes. Look at the way the pattern that question paper pattern is designed. It is absolutely designed for every single one of you to score. So the first one is 20 marks which comes just as an objective. All you need to do, take your pen, just put a tick. You just have to know the right answer and you need to put a tick. So which means the first 20 marks what you are seeing here is going to test your intellectual concept. All you need to know that one word or one line so that you will be able to score one mark mark and 20 questions like that so you have already scored 20 percent of the paper here so that is 20 marks 20 prime marks coming to you look at the second part of it you have four questions of two marks each and then you have five questions of two marks again you have 18 marks here now all these are just two markers two lines and you get two marks there so 20 plus 18 38 marks so that says i have cleared my paper already i have cleared the eligibility level so the first itself ncrt's mentality is to make the student comfortable make them get that assurance that you can definitely pass in economics and that too with flying colors so the next part if you see is going to be a little bit on the higher side where we are going to test your writing skills so you will have the four markers coming in which will fetch you about 28 marks here so 38 plus 28 we move towards 66 altogether and then we have a 24 marks which you can score with your writing skill now the part d is a higher order thinking altogether so each and every question is not just designed from the textbook but to check your understanding your writing skill altogether so you have a 24 marks there and last but not the least the 10 marks that is going to come to you is purely because of a practical oriented question now when i say the practical oriented question that is going to be something where you are going to put in your knowledge skill it's going to be a question on a day-to-day -day matter altogether like let's say that we are going to design a questionnaire or you might be asked to collect some data you might be asked some general knowledge question so this 10 marks in POQ can be fetched very very easily if you're just going to apply a little bit of common sense to it so the way the pattern is being designed all together is to make you understand make you go with the flow saying that yes you will be able to do the best in economics now one thing which i want to say at this juncture is that economics is a subject that requires a regular attention a regular focus from you it is not that i will just study before the exam it is something where you involve yourself on a daily basis even if you put little effort every day and you start focusing on the subject automatically you will be able to score so my dear students please don't worry about economics rather make it your friend and you grow with your friend automatically the subject is also easy you will be also able to score marks with that i come to the conclusion for today's introductory session on 
Economics for the first PU. I hope and believe the session was interesting, informative, and you found economics as a friend, as a new friend for growth altogether. Hope to see you in the class again with more information on economics, with more interesting concepts on economics. Let us start this journey on a positive note and let's start achieving milestones after milestone. So that's where economics journey begins with you at Vidyashram PU College. Thank you once again for joining me today.